Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with the Six Pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbris, and we are going to be joined by an excellent guest today, my colleague with Athlon Sports, Jake Meyer, to break down the recruiting trail. Wisconsin, Badgers, football. What's Luke Fickle been up to this summer? I wanted to ask the best guy I know who has the best info on the interwebs. So we're going to get into that today on the podcast. If you're watching us, you can do so on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack. You can also listen wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter at Kedrick Stumbris. And we are going to be joined now by Athlon sports own Jake Meyer. Jake, thank you very much for joining the Scotty six pack podcast. I'm really excited to talk Wisconsin Badgers football recruiting. Appreciate you having me on, man. It's always fun to chop it up with you. Um, I frankly took a little bit of a backseat to following football recruiting this summer with, I mean, I was shooting off DMs to random 15 year olds playing basketball, right? Like <laughs> there's only <laughs> stuff you can do to follow um, everything. And, and football is hard. You, you, it's like 50 offers every freaking year on the low end, right? Uh, so let's. Let's break it down into Luke Fickle recruiting the 2025 class. So 2026 action going on this summer as well. Lots of official visitors in Madison. What felt like what basically every weekend in, in June and July. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's talk about the biggest wins first. Let's, let's feel good about where, where we were going in terms of Wisconsin fending off some of these big time programs, because they did have some big wins o- over programs with, like national title aspirations who who did wisconsin manage to land either in the 25 class the 26 class that was the biggest recruiting win in in your eyes yeah i mean i think there are so many guys that you can point to especially when you look at the top of this class and the guys that are rated the highest of course those are going to be the guys with with bigger offer lists um but i think the one that stands out to me the most was Hardy Watts, uh, six foot six, 290 pound offensive lineman. He had offers from some blue bloods. I mean, he had offers from Michigan, Clemson, Georgia, Alabama, Penn State, Tennessee. I mean, you can go on and on. Um, and it did eventually come down to Michigan and Clemson and Wisconsin at the end. And I mean, they were the Badgers were able to really close the deal on that one. I mean, and credit to AJ, Bla- uh, AJ Blazik, um, Casey Robick, and I mean, a lot of just Wisconsin's offensive line commits. I mean, they really put kind of a full court press on him towards the end, campaigning on social media, doing as much as they could at the official visit to close the deal. And I mean, like I said, there are a lot that you can point to as biggest wins. For me, I think the Hardy Watts takes the top one for sure. And... and- is this becoming something of a, of a trend for Wisconsin to get into these recruiting battles with some of these higher tier schools or is Wisconsin starting to be, uh, become more of a, a colleague of, of sorts on, on the recruiting trail with your, your Tennessee's Michigan's of the, of the sort. I mean, I think, you know, the recruiting philosophy has for sure changed under Luke fickle. Um, and, while I do think that Wisconsin at this current moment is, I wouldn't necessarily say they're rubbing elbows with with some of these blue blood programs just yet. I mean, the first, the 2024 class was a very solid starting point, and we'll get further into the 2025 class, but this is still a really solid class um, that they have right now. I think they're up to uh, uh, 23 or 24 commits. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but I mean, you're just looking at the talent that they have managed to bring in. Obviously, there's the higher rated guys, and those are going to be the ones to get more attention. But mm-hmm. there are a lot of other guys around here who were being seen by some bigger programs, maybe not receiving the offer, or they did receive these offers. Um, and I think this is indicative that Wisconsin can get to that place. I just don't think they are there just yet. Uh, maybe give it a couple more cycles. So. Um, let's always hopeful for where this program wants to head, which is putting itself back in, you know, what was new year six bowl contention now into the expanded college football playoff. Uh, but before they get there, you're not going to land everybody. I I had a comment on an article I wrote once, uh, that was, 
Uh, they're not Pokemon. You're not going to catch them all. So uh, who who did Wisconsin s- swing and miss on here? Is there any any recruit in particular that you think the staff might look back on from this summer, see that they committed elsewhere and say, damn, we really we really should have had that one. Yeah, so I I think the one that kind of stands out to me, and I will preface it by saying that I feel like you have to feel pretty good about this 2025 wide receiver class for the Badgers. You have Eugene Hilton Jr. and you were able to bring in Cameron Miller as well. Um, I do think, though, that and this is one a prospect that maybe I'm a little bit higher on than when you look at the recruiting rankings and and everything. Uh, But Muiz Tunkara, who uh, was a wide receiver. Um, he visited at the beginning of June. Uh, he was there for the first official visit weekend. Um, and I mean, that kind of the, the debate lives on, on, do you want to be the first visit? Do you want to be the last visit? Where do you want to be in there on official visits? And I think in this case, it might've been a little bit of a detriment to Wisconsin being the first visit. Um, he made other stops at Kansas and Arizona. He ended up committing to Arizona at the end. Um, and after the visit, I mean, it, I spoke with Tunkara and it seemed like there was a lot that he was liking about it. He said he was forming bonds with the players that were there. Mm. Uh, but I think he, the, the Badgers let him go a little bit. They, he went to Kansas, he went to Arizona. They were first in line. They did make a good impression from what I understand. Uh, but he didn't make a decision until a month after his last visit with Arizona. And I think that time in between the first visit and his last one leading up to his commitment, um, I I think that probably was a detriment to Wisconsin in the end. Um, Maybe not a guy that is going to be super high high rated. Like I said, I am pretty high on him as a player, uh, but I think that's one that we might look back on, even if you do feel pretty good about this 2025 wide receiver class at the moment. The the staff has an interesting philosophy that you you got into a little bit at the beginning of, of your answer, which is the age old question: Would you rather be the first official visit for a recruit? Would you rather be the last official visit for a recruit? The staff doesn't seem to have any real lean ide- ideologically on that question. You don't you don't you you certainly see some recruiting weekends over the summer where the the attendee list is is a little bit more stacked than other ones right and they certainly do this during in in season visits for football games you're going to try to stack the list for that alabama game as much as you can right for example but over over in in july they really sprinkle out their their heavy their heavy hitters the guys that they're really going after they they kind of bring them in 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 fits it fits and starts a, along the way they, they don't you know totally unload at any one point in time. Do you see that continuing from this staff? Do you think that's a trend that they might change from what any inclination at all? Or is this just, we, we wait and see next summer. I think it is kind of a little bit of wait and see. I do think the point that you had brought up there is with some of the guys that they're wanting more and how they do kind of sprinkle it out. I think it is a really good uh, philosophy and, and a good way of going about it because in a way you're kind of getting your top guys with some other guys. Oh, these prospects would be nice to have, but you can kind of give them a, the, the full court press or, or give them not King's treatment. Obviously you want to treat all the prospects that are there the same, of course, but um, you know, you kind of do get a little bit of a chance to make your pitch further when you don't have other top targets that are there. Um, so I do think we're still in kind of wait and see mode just because, I mean, in reality, there was some carryover from the Christ regime with the 2024 mm-hmm. class. So mm-hmm. the 2025 class was the real full first cycle that we saw for Luke Fickle and his staff. Um, so there are still some questions that I think are left unanswered. Um, but it's going to be interesting to, to kind of see how that pans out in coming cycles. Yeah, the the full court press for certain commits over over certain visit weekends is one that I I come back to thinking about with this this staff you know, as someone who used to work in in fundraising campaigns and fundraising on a deadline. The one the one thing you can never get back is time time spent. Mm-hmm. You can always raise more money. You can always try to raise more money, um, but you can't get that time back with certain recruits and even ev- individual weekends. You only get so much time with guys, so it's harder if you bring in. You know all the guys that you really want in one weekend to really give them the full court press right right away and it seems that this staff kind of shares that same 
philosophy. So you, you mentioned a little bit that you're you're a higher on some guys than others in this class. So not necessarily the highest rated prospect. Uh, it, it could be if it is. But who who is one guy that you might see yourself as particularly excited about arriving in Madison? Um, let, let's go out of the 2025 class in particular. So, so I would say, um, I mean, there are quite a few players that I feel just extremely excited about to see them in Madison um, in this 2025 class. I think the one that I share the excitement that a lot of other Badger fans have is definitely Eugene Hilton Jr. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's, I mean, there's NFL lineage, so that's exciting in its own right. But I mean, we we saw T. Y. Hilton doing the jump around in the commitment video. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's awesome. Um, but um, there, you look at his tape, and there's just so much to like about his game. I mean, he has straight line speed, uh, so he can create separation. He's slippery in the open field, solid route runner. Knows how to use his body, get himself in good position in uh, contested catch situations. I I think he's really just an all around receiver. Um, might be able to potentially contribute early uh, when you're kind of looking at the state of the wide receiver room. Um, and when he comes to Madison, I think that he might be one of those guys that could be in there for early playing time. Plus he has some experience as a returner. Um, mm. So, I mean, th that's another notch on his belt too. Um, I think I would also throw in another guy that maybe some Badger fans are forgetting about just because he was a relatively early commit in this class. Um, but I'd say Jameer Scott, um, mm. he, you know, like I said, earlier commit, uh, but he has experience on both sides of the ball. Um, and last season, 53 tackles, two interceptions as a defensive back. And he also recorded um, 800 yards and eight touchdowns as a receiver. So uh, he honestly is kind of like a chess piece a little bit. I think he could be used in the boundary. I think maybe not as much in the slot, but he has that capability. And he can be played as a safety. He can really move all around the secondary, physical, quick, sound tackler. I mean, I, I just think there's there's quite a bit to to like about Jamie or Scott and Eugene Hilton, like I had mentioned. J Jameer Scott's a guy who reminds me a little bit, and obviously we haven't seen him play a ton in college yet, but reminds me a little bit of uh, Amari Snowden, the way mm -hmm. that he is this incredibly athletic, versatile defensive back who you know, could have, could have done something else, right. Could have, could have gone and played baseball. Um, but Jameer Scott. Yeah. Really exciting. Yeah. Who, who can't, who can't get excited about having, having <laughs> T.Y. T Y Hilton's son come, come and play for the Wisconsin Badgers. Is, is there anyone, uh, from this summer that they locked up maybe in the 2026 class that you're, you're really looking forward to seeing, or at least hoping that they can hang on to for another year? Yeah, I mean, definitely Jaron Mock. I mean, he is just a very exciting quarterback prospect. I will admit that I haven't dove as much into his film as I would like to. Um, I, I, I think I definitely need to to kind of get on that a little bit more and really kind of understand his game. Uh, but I will say that I think he is maybe one of the most electric uh, in what I have seen. He is very electric. I think that he has a solid arm. I think he can move around really well. Um, I think he, and you know, you do want to lock up your quarterback early. They kind of did that too with Landon Locke yeah. in this 25 class. Um, you know, you lock him in early and then you can kind of build around him. And I think Jaron Mock is going to be a guy that there are um, a lot of prospects are going to want to come play with him, specifically skill position guys or offensive linemen um, who just want to block for him. I think he's going to be um, a, a good piece in this recruiting class to help attract talent. But I also think that he's just very, uh, a very talented prospect in his own right. They they have done a an impressive job of locking up the quarterback early in the first three classes that they're they're putting together here because it's it's Jaron Mock who's in that twenty six class way ahead of anybody else. They did the same mm -hmm. thing with Landon Lock in twenty five, and of course that comes with its own caveats of his brother's already on campus. You didn't really need to recruit him so much as sure. he seemingly asked to be recruited. Right. Um, <laughs> But they, they did the same thing with Mabry Matower, right? At, at mm -hmm. the time that they were still recruiting just transfer quarterbacks to come in for, for that year. Um, it's, I think, a testament to how powerful of a, a, of a recruiter that Phil Longo is. Um, it's, it's really impressive to me. Um, besides quarterback, 
Is there any other positions that Wisconsin seems to really be recruiting well at this point in time? Who, who on, on the staff is, is getting their guys um, and impressing with those, with those stars to the class? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the the obvious answer here is the offensive line, uh, but I mean, it is the right answer. It just really jumps off the page when you're looking at the guys that they were able to bring in. Um, I mean, AJ Blazek's importance to this program since he came over, it, it can't mm-hmm. be it can't be overstated. I mean, he has really, really helped bring back the, uh, the excitement around Wisconsin being O-line U. I mean, we talk about it a lot uh, as Badger fans, but I I think he's really kind of reestablishing that brand. Um, But I mean, you just run down the list of the guys that they were able to bring in. You got two guys who are four star top 250. Uh, You got Logan Powell and Hardy Watts. You got um, an in-state stud in Michael Roski or Rayski. Nolan Davenport, who switched from tight end to offensive line this last season, and he shined in his junior year as an offensive lineman. Um, and I think you also have a guy with some good upside in Canton Clark. Um, and I mean, he's coming into one of the best situations at Wisconsin to tap into that upside and that potential that he has. Um, I mean, AJ Blazek was responsible for all of those commits outside of Rayski, uh, who was part of the, who committed prior to Blazek coming in, but he did a good job of retaining him. Um, I mean, like I said, you really just can't overstate how important Blazek has been, how important his presence has been on this offensive line room um, and in recruiting. Uh, Will this class be better than the 2024 offensive line class? I mean, I'm not sure that offensive line class in 2024 was ridiculous, but uh, it's a fun debate to have, and and it's a good one to have. Oh, which of these recruiting classes is going to have the better offensive linemen? we're getting some some really top targets um so i like i said offensive line is obvious kind of in terms of the biggest strength but it's the right answer i think uh i think there are plenty of people who are happy to hear that as the right answer um what what about a a less than than happy position is there is there any place that wisconsin has missed on in, in this 25 class so far there's obviously a few months left until signing day where do they have to go put in work yet and is it because they missed on any certain guys yeah i don't necessarily think there is um like a glaring hole in this class at the moment i mean obviously they're gonna go it looks like they're gonna go without a running back in this cycle they put the full court press on um on byron lewis kind of put all the eggs in that basket um and it seems like it's trending elsewhere but i mean you're if you go without a running back in this cycle, you're it's fine because of you how just bring in Dupree. three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And <laughs> considering how, what we're hearing about Darian Dupree and Dylan Jones in mm-hmm. camp, I mean, you, you you have to feel pretty good about where the running back class or the room is at at the moment. Um, and, you know, I'd say that maybe the defensive line, uh, it doesn't necessarily stand out among in this class. But I do think you have a couple of really solid guys there. You got in-state Middleton standout, Torin Petaway, mm-hmm. uh, Wilmerson Telemake um, from Florida. And then you also just um, not too long ago brought in Xavier Upanu. Um, it, it's still a, a solid defensive line class. And I think that's also indicative that we might be seeing a pickup in defensive line recruiting, which was a struggle for the Badgers in, in, in recent classes. Um, I mean, Overall, I think you have to feel pretty good about where this class stands. Um, other than you know, you're not gonna, you're going to go without a running back, but like we discussed, it's not that big of a deal. Um, maybe you want to add in one more wide receiver potentially, um, and you know, we're also still kind of waiting to see if Zadie and Gentry might be coming to Wisconsin from SMU. That's kind of been smoke there for a while yeah. now. Um, but I don't think there's any huge holes. There's just some, I think some opportunities in the position groups that they've already formed just to shore up some more talent. Um, you mentioned, you mentioned D D line and and, an edge rusher that I'm almost surprised that we haven't even talked about as part of this conversation is Mason, Mason Posa. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> like a, a big piece there. Obviously, there's still work to do, but Mason Posa stands stands out to me. I, I want to mention him and I'll give you an opportunity to talk anything about him. I mean, Wisconsin beat out <laughs> Oregon, who has unlimited money, um, yeah. at least until Phil Knight dies, um, mm -hmm. to, to go, and, go and get guys was just named to, I think it was 247's freaks list in the 25 class. Really yep. impressive edge rusher out of uh, New Mexico, if I'm right. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. New Mexico. Um, t tell me about Mason Posa, just because uh, he's a guy that I'm I'm really excited about, and I feel like I don't know well well enough, to, despite my own excitement. I mean, uh, to put it in just a couple words, game wrecker. Uh, he is a absolute animal. He's quick. He is uh, absolutely ferocious at the point of contact. He's a sound tackler in the sense that he doesn't tackle high. He he understands that the low man wins and he gets low. Um, I think he can, you know, he's effective in rushing the pass, the passer, maybe a little bit less refined in his coverage, but I think there is a solid foundation there. Uh, you really like him as a run stopper and getting after the quarterback. Um, I also did think, you know, just on the topic, like you had said from New Mexico, um, it's kind of one of those areas that I feel like you don't see Wisconsin dip into very often, but yeah. it is uh, an exciting uh, thing to see, especially when you're getting a guy who is ranked in the top 175, according to the 24 seven sports composite. Um, I mean, he is going to be, I think, really special. I think he has the opportunity to contribute as soon as he steps on campus. Mm -hmm. And I think he is really going to make a name for himself in Madison. Yeah. You, you mentioned his ability to get leverage, right? I believe he's, he's a wrestler too, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some background and, and there. Yeah. And so that's something that I know we heard. I thought maybe it was lip service just from Luke Fickle's background as, as a wrestler. And, you know, then obviously they, they grabbed Dylan Jones uh, in the 2024 class. They seem to actually really like and really value these these wrestling cross types, particularly on the defensive side. Um, I find that I, I think notable if you're looking at guys that Wisconsin might be going after in future classes. Uh, Jake, is there anything else, any other trends, maybe maybe a multi-sport athlete kind of a trend, uh, maybe a, uh, how they're recruiting any certain positions, anything that you think we've learned about how this staff under Luke Fickle is going to attack recruiting in recent years? Did we learn anything big this summer? Um, big takeaways. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the biggest takeaway and kind of going back to, um, you know, dipping into places all over the map. Um, I mean, they got Mason Posa from New Mexico. Um, they were able to get um, players from, from Florida, a couple of them from Florida, uh, one from Arizona, a couple from New Jersey, Tennessee, Massachusetts. Uh, when Luke Fickle came in, um, he, he said that, you know, the heart of their recruiting is going to be within a 350 mile radius. And he kind of broke that like right away mm -hmm. by, by dipping into yeah, other that didn't, areas. It just never seemed real to me considering, yeah. right? Like that's a fun number, but also where you are from in Ohio and where you have all these connections over in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. like that's outside of that 350 mile radius. You're telling me that you're not going to go there. That number always seemed incredibly weird and arbitrary to me, particularly yeah. in college football in 2024, or 2025. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, but I do think that this is a an interesting trend to kind of monitor over the coming cycles is if they are going to kind of reach around to all the places that you don't really see traditionally that Wisconsin is attacking on, on the recruiting front. Um, it'll be interesting to see if, if that is kind of the uh, the the philosophy going forward. Um, I would also like to mention that I, I think there are still some folks that are worried about in-state recruiting. Um, and what are you talking about? We just got like the best kicker there is, and he's in state. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Schmidt, uh, come on. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I mean, Hey, it's exciting. Number one punter in the country and you, and he is from the great state of Wisconsin. So, I mean, that that's an exciting <laughs> recruiting win. Uh, but I mean, yeah, they missed on some of the top rated guys in the cycle, like um, Owen Strebig, James Flanagan. Uh, mm -hmm. Those guys were always going to go to Notre Dame, though. I mean, though, kind of wasn't 
one that you can really hang your head when mm. when you saw that those announcements come through. Of course, they lost Trey uh, Poteet uh, from Verona to Tennessee. Yeah, um, I think that was that that was the writing was on the wall for that one. That's that's a little bit yeah. different. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but with the guys that they did bring in, we mentioned uh, Michael Rayski. Uh, they brought Cooper uh, Catalano, Torn Petaway, Grant Dean. Uh, it is a still pretty solid in-state class. Oh, and Eric Schmidt, of course. Um, it is a pretty solid in-state class. And I think they are, the staff as a whole is trending in a better direction um, of getting guys in 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 the state to stay in state. Um, so it is something that is trending up in the last two cycles. You have the 2024 class, 2025. I think we're kind of seeing that maybe there isn't as much to worry about in terms of in-state recruiting. Um, so that is a trend that I'm going to be watching too, to just kind of see as the staff is still getting situated and getting their roots put in around the state of Wisconsin, building those relationships with high school coaches, whatnot. Um, is this going to continue? Are we going to see more and more in-state commits um, going forward? I think that's definitely something worth monitoring. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And there's, I, I think people too often think about it uh, on a po- there I, either on polar opposite ends of like in-state cr- recruiting is everything or in-state recruiting doesn't, doesn't mean much at all. And I think there really yeah. is a spectrum here where it, I think it does matter to a certain extent to actually create your, home base otherwise you are too tied to where the assistants on your staff individually have connections uh look look at colin hitchler right he he Mm -hmm. went off and went to alabama um former safeties coach and he was plucking a lot of guys with real interest in wisconsin out of pennsylvania we don't have any of these guys in that in this in this cycle right that's not that's not a place that currently exists as fertile recruiting ground without Colin Hitchler here, at least for the time being. And it's, you know, a one year sample to one year sample. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you don't build that fertile recruiting ground, I I do, I do understand the complaint about it. And I think we've seen some of that firsthand. Um, any, anything else that, that we missed here, Jake, or, or would you like to tell the people where to, where to find more, more of your wonderful face, voice and words? Yeah. Um, so I am, you know, just putting out content, uh, Athlon, all Badgers. Uh, you can, you can always check in on what we're doing. We got a great team over there. Um, you know, it's a, a new place for us. Of course, we were previously Badger notes, but this is um, op- an exciting opportunity. Um, I think, and it is, of course, we're still going to be bringing some, some great content. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, Jake J. Meyer. I have kind of been trying to use Twitter less, uh, but you can still find my tweets there uh, when there is some important Badger stuff going on. Um, so yeah, just feel free to check me out. And if you want to look at my face more, um, I, I guess go for it. <laughs> <I'm on Twitter>. <laughs> <laughs> Using Twitter less is always good for your health, but if you're going to use it at all, uh, you should use it to give to give Jake a follow. Um, a quintessential <laughs> Badgers football recruiting follow. Jake, thanks so much for coming on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Uh, looking forward to talking with you again real soon. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Kendrick. Thank you. Thank you again to my friend Jake Meyer for joining the show. Uh, a good follow, but an even better dude. And certainly uh, made, us, made us smarter here. Just edge my kid. I was just edging my kid. I was- uh, so really glad to have him along for today's show. Talking Wisconsin Badgers recruiting. Uh, we're going to be back in your feed tomorrow with a little special episode a little special episode little crossover episode um can't wait to do it i'm enjoying the beach but you should enjoy the scotty six pack we'll be back with you tomorrow on wisconsin